Welcome to our weekly discussion of all things current in California politics. I'm Walt Gray. Joining us this week, reporter Emily Hoven, a political columnist with the San Francisco Chronicle. Emily, welcome. Always nice to see you. So the governor is declaring victory over big oil. There's going to be a watchdog group overseeing big oil in California regarding how much we pay for gas prices. Has the governor defeated big oil? I think that's the message he would like Californians to take away from this. Obviously, you know, I think the proposal is really interesting because what it really is now is a transparency measure where basically we're going to have state regulators requesting more information from oil companies about prices, and supplies and things like that, which is very different from what the governor said when he first started out, which was he wanted to financially punish them with a tax or a price gouging penalty. He's coming out saying that this is 10 times better. Um, I think it is a defeat for the oil industry in some respects because this was not information that they wanted to disclose. We could see legal suits about this, but I do think that it is not quite what the governor um, started out promising, which does still signal to some extent the might of the industry here in California. You have a column uh, this week in the San Francisco Chronicle where you're talking about uh, state travel to anti-LGBTQ states. And that's being re-examined now by the Democrats? It's not working? Yeah, it's really interesting. We had the state Senate president, uh, pro tem Tony Atkins, um, who is lesbian. She came out this week and said that she is going to introduce legislation that's going to repeal California's travel ban, which now bans state-funded travel to 23 states that have enacted policies that California deems to be discriminatory to LGBTQ people. Um, I think it is a tacit acknowledgement that the law was not effective. Um, and in fact, we saw that it was very easy for politicians, including the governor, to skirt it, um, bringing state-funded um, guards with him when he went to on a personal trip to Montana, a banned state. But it did actually block academic research and other things that could have, you know, ex allowed for an exchange of ideas um, and supported the very groups whose rights California said it was defending. You're also uh, talking about California Public Safety Committee and its role with, with uh, killing a fentanyl bill. Fentanyl is, is a huge and growing problem in the state. Yeah, it's been kind of a hubbub at the Capitol this week because um, in the Assembly of Public Safety Committee, we had the chairperson of that committee, Assemblymember Reggie Joyn Sawyer of uh, Los Angeles, say that he is going to put all fentanyl-related bills that have any sort of punishment or jail, prison-related situations to the side because he wants to look at something that's more comprehensive um, and wouldn't just result in another so-called war on drugs. Um, and that angered a lot of folks that pointed out, you know, this is a this is an epidemic that's killing thousands of Californians, young ki kids especially. Um, and then in the Senate Public Safety Committee, there was a very controversial and very emotional debate over a bipartisan bill that would have basically put fentanyl dealers on notice the second time that they give someone um, a drug with mm -hmm. fentanyl that ends up killing them. That was shot down, again, because of concerns of incarceration. But um, a lot of Democrats are disappointed. And I think it points to the fact that this problem is, is so massive that at a certain point, you're going to have to start looking at the justice side of issues. Yeah, and Democrats are often wary about being accused of being soft on crime in the state. Emily Hoven, thank you. Emily Hoven, political columnist for the San Francisco Chronicle. You can reach out to Emily at emily.hoven at sfchronicle.com.